Okay, we're going to look at allergies next. Um, more, more importantly, um, uh, basically looking at a, a, an allergic reaction. And now we're not just looking at somebody that's eaten something and it's not, not really agreed with them. We're looking at extreme allergic reactions, which brings about what they call an anaphylaxis uh, or an anaphylactic uh, episode. And what that means is it's a life-threatening condition. Now, believe it or not, a lot of people are under the misapprehension that this happens an awful lot. Um, not last year, the year before, um, only 18 people in the whole UK died from anaphylaxis. But a lot of people have uh, suffered anaphylaxis and had the correct treatment um, because there's been so much um, news about it and everybody knows how to treat it now. So it's actually improved people's chances of survival. Um, what is it? It's an extreme reaction to a trigger. Now, the most common trigger for anaphylaxis is nuts, and nuts come in all different forms, sesame, sesame seeds, uh, peanuts, uh, peanut butter, or any kind of thing that's got traces of nuts in it, or even some people's reaction is so extreme. If something's, somebody's been eating a bag of nuts in the same room, that could trigger their anaphylaxis. Um, there are other things that can cause anaphylaxis, things like seafood, strawberries, um, pretty much anything can cause it, um, but it's dependent on the individual, what causes or what triggers their anaphylaxis. Now generally anybody that has anaphylaxis will carry an EpiPen. Now EpiPen is what everybody calls these, but it's actually a, an adrenaline auto-injector and it's got epinephrine, which is another name for it, adrenaline, uh, contained within it. Now what does adrenaline do? It speeds up the heart. Now. Um, what I'm going to cover first is the signs and symptoms of somebody suffering from anaphylaxis. So what does it look like? What would you expect the casualty to be uh, demonstrating to you? So the first and uh, the most obvious thing, and this is going to be um, um, included within photos that you're going to see within the, uh, the package for this particular presentation. So you'll see some pictures of people that have suffered genuine anaphylaxis. So the first thing you'll see is swelling to the face and lips. So the lips will swell up, the face will get all puffy around the eyes, cheeks. You'd also expect to see uh, hives, which is like these red blotchy marks all over their skin. Could be the chest around the neck and around the face. Now the danger with the swelling is obviously the restriction to the airway. Um, although a lot of people think that's what kills people from anaphylaxis and it's not. Obviously restricted uh, oxygen to the airway or through the airway does cause problems and if it's untreated it will get progressively worse. Um, now these pens contain epinephrine, adrenaline as I've said. This is not to treat the allergic reaction. This is specifically to deal with the problems that come about with the heart and what the heart, how the heart reacts to anaphylaxis. So one of the symptoms as I said is swelling to the face and lips. The other symptoms are shortness of breath. That's with the swelling around the airway, the tongue, etc. And the other one is lightheadedness. Now, why do people get lightheaded? It might be because of the lack of oxygen getting into the lungs through the mouth. But the other reason is because the heart rate plummets. It slows right down. And that's why people feel lightheaded. So when we look at treatment for this condition, your number one priority, if somebody's demonstrating anaphylaxis, and as I've said, you're gonna see it, get them laid on the floor as quickly as possible. And what that does, it takes the stress off the heart. Because um, what we're trying to avoid now is a cardiac arrest and that's the number one cause of death in people that suffer from anaphylaxis. It is cardiac arrest. The heart stops pumping. So with that in mind, lay them flat on the floor, lots of reassurance. Ask them, do you have your pens on you? Now these are two different types of pen. You've got the Emeraid and the standard uh, EpiPen trainer. Okay, these are training pens and I'm going to demonstrate how you use the pens. Now, it's exactly the same for both. They both come with lids, okay? That's actually the pointy end, that's the sharp end. Generally, these pens come in clear plastic, solid plastic uh, containers. And generally, the person will put their name on the container so you know it's their pen, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate with this one, okay? So we're gonna assist them. Ideally, the casualty should use this pen on themselves. They generally carry two, but recently, in the last couple of years, there's been a massive shortage of these pens. So consequently, a lot of people are only carrying one of them. Um, I will cover the protocols as, as though they've got two, but basically, that's what the pen looks like. You've got a blue end and an orange end, okay? You hold the pen 
with your fingers and thumb, provided they have handed you the pen and given you permission to use it on them. When would they do that? If they are fingers and thumbs and they're panicking, you might want to assist them. So they give you the pen, that's implied consent. Okay, the fact they've handed you the pen. If they're unresponsive lying on the floor and you see a pen next to them, you cannot use that pen unless you have got other information about that casualty, i.e. you know it's their pen and maybe they've given permission in advance of them having this anaphylactic uh, episode. But generally, if you don't get permission, you can't use the pen on them. Only a medical practitioner can do that, so a paramedic would be able to use it, unless you are directed by the emergency services when you ring up. As soon as they start giving you directions, they are taking responsibility. But on your own say so, you can't use this pen without permission. So they hand you the pen, they want you to use it. Take hold of the pen with your thumb and your fingers around the pen. Don't place it on top of the pen. Why not? Because people have done this in the past where they've gone to jab the pen in someone and the needle's gone through their thumb. Okay? So don't hold your thumb on the top of the pen, round the pen. Orange to the thigh, blue to the sky, and that's the way up you hold it. Orange to the thigh, blue to the sky. This is a safety release catch. Remove that, that is now a live pen. Now the target area you're gonna uh, uh, attach it to or hit with is the side of the thigh, the major muscle group here. Now what do you have to be wary of? If they're wearing jeans, they might have a seam down their jeans, uh, avoid the seam because it might compromise the needle, might not go in properly. The other thing is if they've got mobile phones or keys in their pockets, you need to target somewhere where, where it's not being compromised, okay? It will go through clothing. The only issue I would suggest is things like if somebody's wearing motorbike leathers or something like that, or Kevlar like chainsaw pants or something like that, it ain't, it's not gonna go through stuff like that. So once you've established you've got a target area on the side of the thigh, with the pen, you're gonna strike in that area and hold it. And it's, you've gotta be quite firm. Now there is a certain amount of kickback on these pals when you strike, so watch when you strike, hit and stick. So I'll demonstrate with a pen from here, in and hold it for up to 10 seconds. Now it used to be 10 seconds, uh, the exact time you need to hold it in there. Now, how do you come up with 10 seconds? One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, so on and so forth. Somebody said to me, what if I leave it on for 11 seconds? It doesn't matter, as long as it's 10 seconds. They've found out that actually after five seconds is all you need to leave it on there and that's sufficient to get enough adrenaline in them. Once you've released it, the sleeve covers the needle. Now, if I had done it like this, let me put the safety release catch back in there. If I'd done it like that, I've got a negligible amount of adrenaline. So I've wasted one of their lifelines. So make sure you hit and you stick. So from here, hold it when you're ready. Oh, release the catch, sorry. In, hold it for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, release. Now you can use the other pen, there. if they have a second pen, you can use that five to 15 minutes after the first pen. Um, if they don't have a second pen, well then so be it. Now here's the thing, once you've used a pen, you then have to monitor their condition, their airway and their breathing. This does not deal with the swelling. However, it does have a positive effect on the swelling in that it increases circulation as this speeds the heart up and gets the blood circulate around the body, so it's more likely that it will have a positive effect on their swelling. But it's not to treat the swelling. They have to go to hospital and be given intravenous antihistamines. So it's really important. Use a pen, 999 straight away. Ambulance will arrive, take them to the hospital on the hurry. If it's close by and you've got a car, get them in the car, get to the hospital as quickly as possible, okay? Use your second pen five to 15 minutes after the use of the first one if necessary. If you don't have one, then don't worry about it, just get to hospital as soon as possible. Um, it's vitally important, you keep them reassured. If they collapse and they stop breathing, then you just follow the normal protocols and you do CPR. And that's pretty much it. As I said, you're gonna see some pictures now of what anaphylaxis looks like, um, and just emphasizing, you've seen the treatment that I've demonstrated.